Hello, I'm Jonathan Morton and welcome to Judge the Cover, where I take an in-depth look at cover design by picking a book off the shelf and judging what factors helped it succeed or fail at capturing its targeted audience. Today I'll be looking at the cover of The Soldier, Rise of the Jane by Neil Asher. Now, take a good look at this cover. Here's the spine, and here's the first line from the blurb, in a far corner of space in the very borders between humanity's politity worlds and the kingdom of the vicious grab-like Prador is an immediate threat to all sentient life. An accretion disk, a solar system designed by the long-dead Jane race, and swarming with living technology powerful enough to destroy an entire civilization. Now comment, make a mental note, or write down any emotions, thoughts, themes, or general plot details that you think this cover is trying to convey. Don't worry, the intro will give you time to think it over. There's no denying that people judge things by their covers, and it usually comes down to wanting to shy away from or engage more into a particular experience. The saying, don't judge a book by its cover, can apply to a variety of situations, and in general, is a good rule to follow. By making snap judgments, we deprive ourselves of the ability to dive deeper, learn more, or experience something new. However, being able to judge a situation quickly can not only protect us, but increase the likelihood of engaging in experiences we already enjoy. In the book world, covers craft these expected experiences in readers' minds. So, the question becomes, how do you get the right readers to pick up your book? I believe it's all about how they judge the cover. Now let's see what the Soldier's Rise of the Jane's cover can teach us today. And let's start with the spine. At least what I can see of it, Yes, nameless librarian friend has returned again with her stickers and its glossy plastic wrapping, but I'm not going to let it upset me this time. Focus, John, you can do this. Regardless of the stickers, the spine is very clean and to the point. I like how it has a very sci-fi look to it without going too over the top. What draws the eye the most is how the designer separated the important elements out by simply framing them in rectangles that are lighter than the background. The effect does get a little ruined because of the natural gradient of the image they're using behind it, but with a different background, the gradient may have worked better visually. However, I do have to be fair and say that it is very pleasing to look at as it creates a very readable path that invites the reader's eyes to move up and down the spine. The first image we see here is cut and pasted right from the front cover. When I review that section later, you'll see why I believe that it was likely the best part to use, but at the same time, I'm a little unsure about it. But on the other, I can clearly see that it's a spaceship of some sort, and it could be argued that it's there to get the reader to pull the book off the shelf to get a better look at it, so that they can confirm their suspicions about what they're looking at. And once they have it in their hands, the spine has done its job. In the middle section, the author's name and title of the book are nicely separated by color and a little bit of space. The font is on theme and readable as well, and I wonder if it would have been better to switch the places of the title and the author's name, as the orange in the title does slightly blend more into the background. Although the stickers could be offsetting that visual effect for me. Thanks again, nameless librarian friend. Why are you always messing with the accuracy of my breakdowns? Let's just get to the front cover. At least they never put any stickers there. <gasps> Wait. I could just pull it off. It is a little loose in the corner already, but then Nameless Librarian Fred would know. Wait a minute. Does she watch these videos? No, 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 I can't risk it. If I do, I'll be banned from another library. I can't go through that again. Despite this sticker, I enjoy the image on the front cover. This designer must have loved it a lot too, because it's used all over the book cover, even twice on the front. Overall, it appears on the book a total of five times in various forms. But what makes it so nice? Even without the sticker on the side telling me, it's easy to see that this book fits into the science fiction genre of books, and more specifically, something that likely fits into the realms of a military epic or a space opera, if not both. It depicts a huge robotic thing coming out or possibly attacking a planet accompanied by this lone ship that is going to fight it. I don't get much of the story, but that's okay, because the blurb can serve that purpose. This front cover is designed to get me intrigued anyways. So, let's look at how it does that. First, there is this great sense of scale. You've got this ship in the foreground opposing a robotic mountain. 
The only thing I might suggest is making the ship a little bit smaller to emphasize the peril of the situation. But it's not anything that throws the design off for me, and I do like getting to see some of the details on the ship. It is a bit blurry, but it does lend to the overall cool factor of the book. If you're not going to reveal much of the story on the cover, then at the least you need to have a cool factor. And this one is clearly, both visually and thought-provokingly, the robot mountain thing. They really want you to focus on this thing. First of all, it's highlighted by two contrasting colors, blue and orange. It shares space with the brightest spots on the cover. And look at how many lines lead to it. Then once you're looking at it, a ton of questions start to enter your mind. Is that a mountain? Wait, are those legs coming out of it? Is it destroying the planet? Or is it coming out of the planet? And what is that small ship doing there? It doesn't even have a chance against that thing. Speaking of the ship, I think it's a cool design, but what I'm most interested in is this line that's coming right down it that leads right to the title. The title is given enough space to stand out on its own, and I believe it should actually be a little bit lower, if not the whole image itself, because I like how it rests on the dark part of the planet, helping it pop out a little bit more. The quote from John Scalzi does not need to have that much space on the bottom anyway. The title itself is nothing special, except that it suggests that we might see the perspective of a soldier, and there's going to be some kind of rising of the Jane, whatever that might be. I'm going to guess that it's that giant robotic mountain thing that's threatening the planet there, but I'm not sure. So let's check the blurb and see if it can tell us a little bit more. The blurb is a bit convoluted. I mean, it's great for any hardcore sci-fi fans, and I'm intrigued by the story, but it could scare away a more casual audience. I know I'm usually for hitting the targeted audience, but when the first paragraph is made up of one sentence in your blurb, you may have added too much information into it. It's done in the following paragraphs as well, which almost turns me away from the book. This may work for the target audience who are more into deeper world building and that kind of thing, but this is a case where I think catering a little bit more towards the casual audience could pay off, as the cover is more for visual impact other than story. Just so I'm a little bit clear, here's a breakdown of what happens in the blurb. Introduce a race, or a character, add a comma, explain what that is, or who they are, and add another comma, and continue on. It's okay to do this a little bit, but through the whole blurb, it breaks up the tension or narrative flow that can pull the reader in. It ends well enough, but boy did I have to learn a lot about the book before I even read it. It makes me wonder if the whole book will be this way. It does build on the expectation the cover sets up, and despite not liking how it's worded, I'm still interested in the story. I just think it could have been cleaned up a little bit. Oh, and I didn't forget the back of the cover. I'm just ignoring it because it's full of author quotes I don't care about. Here it is if you're interested. So to wrap this up, I'm hooked, so it definitely does its job, but can it hook the more casual readers? I'm not sure. If you're not typically into science fiction, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it below. I'll leave it up for a few seconds so that you can pause the video and read it. But now it's time for my personal score, which is sampled. So that's what I did. But there is something I need to add. Since sampling the book and reading the first few pages, my excitement for it has dropped. I still want to read it one day, but unfortunately my fear about the over explanation and writing style were just confirmed. It just gets a little too expositional for my taste. When I do pick it up, I'll give it a few chapters before I decide if I'm going to keep reading it or not. I just wanted to be honest with you guys about my thoughts, as in this case the cover does accurately describe what's going on in the story. Which is why the cover score stays the same, but my interest in it kind of lowers a little bit. But what about the targeted market score? Well, since I'm part of this audience, I believe the same score of sampled would be awarded to this as well. Then after they sampled it, it would depend on if they liked the expositional aspects of it or not. But what do you think? Let me know below what score you would give this cover and if I accurately identify the targeted market for this book. If the soldier Rise of Jane caught your attention like it did mine, I linked the Amazon page below for your convenience. It's a good way to add it to your TBR list, wish list, sample it, or maybe even buy it. Thank you for watching. If you have any covers that you think need to be judged or just would like me to analyze, please let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell, as it will help me grow this channel and allows me to continue to make helpful content for writers. And as always, don't forget to learn, create, and help others do the same. I'll see you next time.